Finally, I'm obsessed with an old, old wooden ship. And yes, I know I'm not the first anchor man to say so. I'm thinking of the HMS Resolute. It's a British exploration ship that sailed back in the 1800s. To most Americans, it's actually best known not for its storied voyages to the Arctic, but where it ultimately ended up, the Oval Office. Its timbers were used to make the Resolute Desk, used by almost every president since Rutherford B. Hayes. It is in a drawer in that very desk where each of the most recent outgoing presidents has continued a tradition, leaving a letter to his successor, and indeed, to the entire nation. George H.W. Bush wrote one to Bill Clinton. Your success now is our country's success. I am rooting hard for you. Bill Clinton wrote one to George W. Bush. From this day, you are president of all of us. I salute you. George W. Bush wrote one to Barack Obama. You will have an almighty God to comfort you, a family who loves you, and a country that is pulling for you, including me. And Barack Obama wrote one to Donald Trump. Michelle and I wish you and Melania the very best as you embark on this great adventure and know that we stand ready to help in any ways which we can. The Resolute Desk has been used by presidents of both parties. It belongs to no individual but the American people, much like the office itself. And when the time comes for the person who's occupied the seat behind it to pass it on to the next occupant, that transition has happened seamlessly, as has always been the case, as will always be the case, right? Well, for the first time in modern American history, we as a nation are actually quite seriously questioning whether power will transfer peacefully, if indeed Joe Biden defeats President Trump in November. The president has made it clear a peaceful transfer of power is not what he is intending. What he is intending, we'll all learn soon enough. But my mind keeps going back to that desk in the Oval Office, fashioned in the distant past, but still resilient today. Sturdy, yet fragile like our democracy. And two questions come to mind. Donald Trump loses. Would he even leave a letter to his successor and to the nation? And if he doesn't leave behind a letter, what will he leave behind instead?